guys, how's it going? Today we're planting another spring container. We recently planted the first spring containers of the season in a couple of beautiful basket weave metal containers that we just picked up. I showed you the process on how I line it with moss and then burlap to keep the plants all happy and keep the drain the planter draining properly. I want to show you kind of the same thing. It's a little bit of a different process, but I want to show you how I line baskets like this so that I can use them as planters. It helps extend the life of the basket. It won't make it last forever, but it does help it last for quite a bit longer. So the process is different in that we're not going to be using moss because when I use moss, I get it wet and so it will mold to the sides of the containers. I don't want to introduce any extra moisture and soil and moss to this material because that's what makes it start breaking down. So what we're going to use as our first layer instead is burlap. This is an old burlap sack that I got down at the garden center. You can get um, burlap usually down there at garden centers. They have stacks of it sitting around there trying to get you uh, rid of. You can also find it on rolls at craft stores. It's pretty inexpensive and it goes quite far. But I find with baskets the, the weave is a lot tighter so you don't really notice your liner as much as you did maybe in those, those metal containers. It was really wide spots so you could really see all that moss. So we're just going to line this burlap sack around this basket and we won't even and see the basket until the end because I'm just going to let the burlap hang over the sides right here. Super great look, isn't it? But it works wonderfully. Okay, so you can see right there, it's just kind of puddled uh, in the center. I think that'll work out great. Our next layer is a garbage bag right here. This is like a hefty construction garbage bag, so it's a little bit thicker plastic. I don't think it really matters if you use thick plastic or not, as long as you're not going in there with something sharp. But we're going to do the same thing. Form it to the inside of the basket and let the excess hang over the side. I probably shouldn't have put my plants on here. Kind of in the way. Gorgeous plants today. So we are using some hellebores, different varieties from the other day. Some lavender, some beautiful violas, ivy. It's going to be really pretty, I think. Okay, so then at this point I have a pair of scissors. I like to cut drainage holes in the bottom of the plastic two of them in a basket this size. That does mean that water will come in contact with the bottom of the basket, but only in a couple of small spots. It takes a quite a long time and quite a lot of water to start breaking the basket down and the sides will still be really nice because no water will get out the sides. The sides will stay looking really great and you won't have any like mold or any water, hard water spots or anything like that showing. Okay, I'm gonna do my best to tip this. It's just real simple. We're just going to slash a couple holes just through the plastic, it doesn't need to be through the burlap, and they don't need to be giant either. Water finds its way out. Okay, it's perfect. You can leave it uncut. You can have a non-draining container, not something I would really recommend with the plant choice that I have today. Uh, also, if you're gonna be setting your container outside where it could possibly get rain, you don't want your planter to fill up with water. But there are some times like where I will fill an Easter basket, align it like this, fill it with soil without drain holes, put some grass seed in there, and we make a living Easter basket. For more temporary arrangements, it, we get away with that pretty easily. And if you water really sparingly, you may be able to get away with it with other plants as well, but definitely not the easy route for sure. Now we need some soil. We can use a standard potting mix for everything that we're planting today. Okay, this is the part where it really pinches the layers down, makes them feel more solid. Just breaking up the bigger pieces here. Okay, so in spring containers, which I've talked about, talked about this in our last container video, spring containers, you can pack things in really tightly, just like with fall containers, because with spring plants, we don't experience the kind of growth with those that we do with our summer plants. So if you want a really full, abundant looking arrangement for your spring season, I would go ahead and pack quite a number of plants in. They won't really start to grow huge or start to fill in big until almost the end of spring when we're getting ready to dismantle these and put them out in the landscape. If you're putting plants in though and intending to keep them in for the whole season, definitely give them more space. That's not something I can do with the plants that I'm choosing today because they do require, like they have different light requirements and such, which is also something you can fudge in the spring. So I've got like this hellebore right here is an Ice and Roses Picketty. Isn't that a beauty? The backside of the flowers are equally as gorgeous. I just, so pretty. So we've got the hellebores. This is a berry swirl right here. 
the color on that one. But we also have lavender. So lavender likes full sun. Hellebores want a more shady location. In the spring months, hellebores typically get a lot of sun because they are growing and blooming when our trees haven't even leafed out yet. So the trees aren't providing shade for the areas where our hellebores are sitting. They are receiving a lot more sun. So in the spring, when the sun isn't quite as intense, you can put even shade lovers in a more sunny location. So everything will cohabitate beautifully. This is not something we could get away with in the summertime because your lavender would start to languish if, if it didn't get enough sun and our hellebores would start to burn if they got too much, if that makes sense. So spacing requirements and light requirements, I do fudge in the springtime. It's kind of fun to be able to use different things together that you're not used to planting in the same container. We've got a, this is a platinum blonde lavender. Beautiful variegation. It looks like it glows because of that creamy colored margin around the leaves. We've got a couple of different ivies. So this is a, a variegated with white and then there's a dark green English ivies and then a Viola Penny Denim Jump Up. Aren't those the sweetest flowers? And all of these plants are perennial so we can plant all of these out in the landscape. I don't know if I already mentioned that but that always makes me so excited that we can enjoy them more than once in different locations. So let's start I think with this Platinum Blonde Lavender. We're gonna pop this one right around in the front facing you guys. I'm gonna make this kind of two-sided so each side's gonna look a little bit different. And I do make sure to put a little layer of soil. I know you guys can't see it because it's right here. There's a layer of soil up against the side of the container. So that's what the root ball is sitting up next to. You can see that right there. And then we're packing in soil around the roots. Now I'm going to put in the Ice and Roses Picatee. Oh, that came out of the container easier than I thought it was going to. A little tease to the roots. Hellebores don't really like a lot of root manipulation. They always like to do a little bit because they're always so twisted around in their container. Okay. So that one will sit there. I might have to kind of fuss with this a little bit. And then back toward me, I'm going to use the silver lavender. It smells so good and it's so fun to use this basket. I picked this up, I think on one of our antiquing trips. When uh, my mom and I went out, I think we filmed it. I think it was one of those trips when I got this basket. I use them for all kinds of stuff. So planter, harvest baskets, whatever kind of strikes the fancy. Right up front here, we're gonna do the berry swirl. Oh, this is so beautiful. These two look so beautiful together. Okay, now we're gonna go in with our fluff around the edges with our violas and our ivy. Put some soil in between the root balls there. And then our variegated ivy. No, let's see, do we wanna do variegated? Let's do a green ivy up here. And then on this side, I've got more. Let's pop one of these here. I actually can't wait to plant this platinum blonde out in the landscape. I got a couple others <laughs> I'm gonna plant along with this one. I'm gonna do another ivy right here. And then I'm gonna twist the basket so you can see the rest. Oh, oh, that is so cute. We're gonna tuck a variegated ivy over here. I kind of wanted to make sure the variegated ivy ended up over here next to the silvery lavender, as opposed to putting two of the variegated plants close together. Oh, I almost lost that at the edge of the table. Ugh. Our earlier arrangement, I guess that was the first one for spring, wasn't it? It's kind of a winter arrangement. The sedum and hellebores we put in the Hartley, they're still looking amazing in there. The hellebores are blooming and gorgeous. It's another ivy. And then we're gonna fill in the rest with violas right here. Okay, it's all planted looking absolutely beautiful. There are drain holes, so the plants will be happy. 
So now we need to get rid of all the excess burlap and plastic. We don't want to cut it flush with the soil though. Leave a little bit of a lip like a regular container because if you cut it flush and you water and it subs over the sides then you get it on your basket which is kind of the opposite of what we are going for here. So when you go in to cut, and I do this slowly because I don't want to accidentally cut my plants. I leave a little bit and we're going to come along with some moss just a little bit along the edges to tidy it up so you can't see any of the excess plastic. It's a little bit high. See how the side is right here and I left a little bit of a lip. That's about what you want. So I'm going to do that all the way around with both the burlap and the plastic. Okay, now that we have that all done and you can see the basket, isn't that so pretty? Just the warmth of the basket material with the fluffy plants and all the color and different textures. I just think it's so gorgeous. Uh, it'll look better once we can't see any of the plastic or burlap though. So I do have some of this preserved sheet moss. I got it slightly damp a while ago, just so that we can mold it a little bit easier and it wasn't a kind of a, when moss is dry, it's a little bit dusty and dirty and messy. Um, so it's not enough moisture to where it will hurt our basket. It will dry pretty quickly. So I'm just going to take some moss and we're going to go in and just kind of mold it around the edge just to finish it off kind of like this right here. That look finished? <laughs> I can't tell from, from here. Not quite. Actually, I think it needs to be tucked in a little bit further, but that's the general idea of what I'm going to be doing. I'll probably start on the back side here and work my way all the way around, and then we'll take a look at the finished product. goodness I love this you guys it looks a little bit different from either side because of the lavenders so we've got the silver lavender here variegated ivy the really sweet violas there are some more ivy right here I actually in the end took apart one more ivy and it came apart into about four pieces and I was able to tuck it like little pieces in here or there just to give it a little bit more fluff but as we twist it the arrangement takes on a little bit of a different look because we've got that variegated lavender on the other side. So it looks really pretty no matter which way you look at it, which is so fun. A lot of our containers, you know, that we do have a back to them because we're putting the pot up against a wall or something like that. So a lot of the centerpiece is toward the back and then everything else fills in toward the front. So it's really fun to have this one look so pretty all the way around. And you can see, if you look really closely, you can see the burlap through the basket weave, but honestly, it looks really good. Uh, it's just kind of another natural texture. And then we've got the moss lining the edges, uh, which gives it that finished put together look. And it makes it look almost more springy to me to see that really pretty pop of green moss. Okay, so we already talked talked about plant spacing and how you can get away with a lot more in the spring. Um, we talked about plant light requirements and putting different things together and how you can kind of fudge that in the spring as well. The last thing is watering. Because it's so cool outside, like right now, this is going to stay in our greenhouse for probably the next week. We do have one cold dip coming this next week. I'll wait till it's hovering around freezing or just slightly above before I put this out. Everything though is hardy, like it could handle it, but I want to preserve the really nice leaves. I don't want any kind of frost damage to happen to this. So um, that's kind of the marker for me is when nighttime temperatures are staying, hovering around freezing or just above. And then I think I veered from watering, but watering won't need to happen very much, probably once a week. Uh, in the greenhouse. Once they're outside, oftentimes, especially if we've got it in a spot that's a little bit more protected, about every 10 days, maybe every two weeks, uh, until it starts warming up. And once it starts warming up, or if we have a lot of wind, then we have to up the amount of water that we give our spring containers. So anyway, that's it for today. Just wanted to walk you through the process on how to use a basket as contain a container, because baskets are usually really easy to find. They're usually very inexpensive. You can usually find like a, a section in a thrift store where you've just got shelves of baskets uh, and you can really do a lot with them so and they don't have to be this big you can do some really sweet little arrangements like um, for each 
place setting. We've done that before. You can do Easter baskets like I talked about. There's just a lot of possibilities. So I hope you guys enjoyed seeing this come together. I hope it was helpful and we will see you in the next video. Bye.